Brother Kyle, I'm beginning to lose faith that Liam will ever paint the rest of our squad. There is still hope. Our specs recordings indicate a drop pod just landed in this quadrant. That's not our squad. What is the meaning of this? By the Emperor! What's up, people? Welcome to the Millennial Model Mayhem Content Zone. My name is Liam, and today, in celebration of my channel's one-year anniversary, I'm gonna paint another monster energy marine. Also known as Kyle02. Regular viewers of my content will know that I like doing projects based around memes, and the original monster energy marine was one of the very first channel memes. Your marine, your way. It's a foolery! War is eternal, and you must forge more caffeinated soldiers! Sorry Kyle, you're right. This time I'm painting an eradicator instead of an assault intercessor because... Monster Energy Zero Ultra. Oh, and I'm gonna try and use some G-Paint V2 on it as well. Clax Engage. Once the plain sprinkles have been removed, I clean up any remaining nub marks and mold lines and drill the gun barrels. This squad of eradicators from the Indominus box set is looking extra thin! But for this video, I'm only going to be painting one of them because I'm not sure how this experiment with lacquer paint is going to go. And I get to do less work. Nice. For the basing material, I'm using my usual mixture of hobby sands that was used on the other Monster Energy Marines. Once dried, I'll put another layer of PVA glue thinned with water to help seal in the material. In my last video, I had some issues hand painting due to the dry climate where I live. So before starting on the Marine, I did some tests on this SD from the G-Paint V2 video with a retarder that I got from a hobby store. After a couple layers, everything seemed to be going well, so I started on the Marine. The Monster Energy Zero Ultra can has a white color scheme, so for the Eradicator's armor, I start with a mixture of white, blue, and a dash of black for a nice, cool gray foundation. I follow up with a highlight layer of pure white, making sure to preserve the cool gray color in the shadow areas. Next, I paint the base, which needs to match the other Monster Energy Marines. Starting with a layer of terracotta, I then mix in some game color earth and start dry brushing. I gradually work in some model color sand yellow into the mix for the final dry brushing, then finish it off with a wash of Army Painter's soft tone. Then it's time to hand paint with the G-Paint. Because it's pre-thinned, the retarder type thinner I was using meant that I had to do multiple coats on most areas of the model to get a good finish which took slightly longer than usual compared to using the typical acrylics you would with a miniature. It was also a minor inconvenience to have to wear a respirator to protect from the fumes. I made sure only to use my synthetic brushes because the lacquer paints and thinner needed to properly clean them are pretty harsh chemicals. I used dark iron for the metallic sections, then switched to gunmetal for the second coats, and the same combo was used for the logo on the shoulder. Next, I have to switch back to acrylics because this sugar-free marine belongs to the same army as the other marines, and I want to make sure the details match in the same way the base's colors do. The leather sections get a base coat of model color burnt umber, then get two rounds of edge highlighting by mixing in game color khaki, followed by sand yellow. The purity seal gets a base of terracotta and a basic highlight of scorn red, and the parchment gets painted with the same mix as the leather but focusing more on the khaki and sand yellow end. Small lines of black are then painted on to represent text. 
The last round of details starts with painting model color bronze for the symbols on the arm and gun, and then a bit of silver highlight to the metallic sections just to give them a little bit more sparkle. I also thought that the logo could use a better defined highlight, or lighter section of the claw mark. Then I couldn't help myself and did some basic gray edge highlighting on the gun. Next I really carefully apply some red ink to the eyes, and then after a gloss top coat I brought out those panel line details with good old Tamiya black panel liner. Then I cleaned it up with mineral spirits and a q-tip. The last thing to do was apply a water slide decal to the right shoulder pad, but I'm pretty sure I accidentally gave it to my friend who I split the Necron half of the box set with, so I just grabbed this unused sheet that came with my Adeptus Mechanicus models. First, you paint a model from a different squad and now you're using decals from a different faction? Unacceptable! Come on Kyle, praise the Omnissiah! Uh -huh. Then everything is protected with a matte top coat and some appropriate tufts are glued to the base. Before I show off this thick boy, I want to take a moment to reflect on the Millennial Model Mayhem project as a whole. Like I said earlier, the channel started with a video about painting a marine for a custom monster energy themed army, and... Oh man, that footage looks bad. After that project, I wasted no time in moving on to the next video, where I attempted to bamboozle my small audience with gunpla content instead of mini painting. I'm not sorry. I like to think these two videos represent the foundation of what kind of YouTube channel I've been trying to make. Entertaining hobby content about custom model kits and miniature painting with a healthy dose of memes. Ashtray. Disgust. <laughs> Goof. You. <laughs> Weep. <laughs> And I try to continuously develop my technique and style, both in terms of the hobby and content creation, and I believe the variety of my videos and models reflects that. I realize that overall my Gumpla content has performed a lot better than the mini painting content, but I don't want that to stop me from doing projects that personally inspire me, and I've been painting miniatures far longer than I've been working with Gunpla, so it's an integral part of how I approach the hobby. Just look at how I approach painting in my Model Mayhem style. Despite the psychic damage that the content creator life causes sometimes, the process of creating these YouTube videos has been very satisfying for me. So no matter what kinds of projects I decide to take on, I'd like to continue making entertaining hobby content about them. There are a lot of people that help the channel grow to where it is now, and I'd like to specifically thank Blue Parappa, Goobertown Hobbies, Heath Aldrich, Elaine, my creator friends in the G-Squad, Studio G, who gave me the idea to use G-Paint on a marine in the first place, and my friend Devin for once again providing his voice acting talents. But who, what are you? My name is Kyle03. I'm like you, brother, but with special issue scratch resistant armor, and I'm sugar free. My experiment attempting to use lacquer paints on a space marine was a success. It wasn't as hard as I thought it would be, so when I want to finish the squad I can use the same recipe. Only the Emperor knows when I'll ever need them for an actual game of 40k. Lacquer paints are not the most appropriate for painting Warhammer models because of factors like the fumes or the longer drying time, but if you happen to be curious about it, I hope my meme-inspired project satisfied your curiosity and kept you entertained. Obviously this was not the most efficient painting video for a white space marine, but if you made it this far already, I'll assume you've enjoyed it. Honestly, thank you for watching to the end of the video, and extra big special thank you goes out to everyone who's watched to the end of all my other videos. I know I don't have the most consistent video release schedule, but I'm determined to not let myself be totally controlled by the algorithm and continue to follow the hobby muse. Just like I did with this high-grade Flauros, I decided to spontaneously customize it and make a new intro animation. I've recognized that being able to switch projects or work off camera like this is important to my mental health, and I don't want to compromise that for the sake of any media platform. With that being said, my head is still full of ideas for more videos, so this won't be the last you see of Millennial Model Mayhem.
If you'd like to support my content, consider giving me money on Patreon or YouTube memberships. And of course, it's free to follow me on social media and give me that sweet YouTube engagement. Next time in the- The algorithm demands that you lock on notifications and annihilate the like and subscribe buttons. And leave a comment.